Okay, it's now our new segment, uh, Attention on Addictions, with uh, Michael O'Neill. And Michael, I gotta tell you, last week was the first, um, first segment. It hit over 50,000 views. And I read some of the comments, and they were earth-shattering, that your opening segment impacted so many people, and the feedback was so positive. It had to touch you personally that your segment last week uh, impacted so many people in a positive way. Well, it feels great to know that the voice is being heard uh, and that attention uh, and awareness is being raised. Uh, that's first things first. The comments, I mean, there's a lot that, that wasn't seen. I got tons of private messages, people from India, people from Pakistan, people from all over the United States, all reaching out and explaining how addiction hits home. Uh, hits home for everybody. Uh, but, you know, particularly looking at it and seeing, you know, the, the feedback was great because it just made me realize, one, my cousin was a very loved uh, individual. And that felt good to know that, uh, you know, people are wanting to get involved. Uh, a lot of my friends reached out, some in active addiction, um, you know, some still, you know, that have recovered from addiction. And they explained how important it is to get out there and, and to say the things that need to be said because someone's got to do it. And I, I got to tell you, after losing my cousin and then my best friend a year ago, um, you know, it really just made me realize I'm, I'm not sitting quietly anymore. I can't do it. Uh, I don't want to see people pass away anymore. I don't want to see this tragedy continue to expand. And the only way we can stop it is with unconditional love and raising awareness and building a community around it to let people know that there's someone they could go. And, and if this video could help one person out of the 50,000 that's seen it, then it's worth it. And I'll do it every single time, anywhere, anyplace, anytime. And, and my Facebook, my cell phone is always open to anyone that wants to hear anything. So my initial reaction was, wow, uh, taken back a little bit. Uh, but not surprised because, again, I know how many people my cousin touched and how many people love him and, and, and shared that message. I had a lot of people sharing, saying, Mike, I want to share this. I want people to see this. And to me, that, that meant a lot. Absolutely. And Michael, what I want to get to, I think, this week's important is to talk about your journey from being an addict yourself and where you were, the depths you were, and how you rebounded to um, you now you're, you're a successful stockbroker, uh, you're happy in your life, uh, you, and talk about your journey from where you were and how you are a living, breathing example of someone that can be in the throes of addiction and beat it and turn your life around. So let's talk about your example of where you were then and where you are now to inspire others that Michael O'Neill did it, I can do it. Well, first things first is it took, it, it took years for the mind to clear because the body has a physical dependence on something. Uh, so that, that was very important. But I, I want to say, uh, actually, the, the two people who passed, my cousin Brock and Zach Stone, they helped me tremendously. As a matter of fact, Brock sat with me in every meeting I went to, supported me any single time. Anytime I called him up, answered the phone, called me back. Uh, and this is someone that was in active addiction, right? So it, it's powerful, right? I mean, if I could just touch on, on my story, I mean, my whole world fell apart. I mean, my, my son was born and, and, and my life, my business, I had invested in a stock that was going bankrupt and I was just depressed. I was in a low point in my life that I didn't think I was ever gonna get out of. But having the people around me that just believed in me and, and they wanted to see me succeed and they were willing to do whatever it took. People like Brock that sat there and listened to me for hours. We came up with different ways. How can we beat this? How can we move forward? Met different people. We tried to help as many people as we could. If I could say one thing to anyone out there struggling with addiction, it's to struggle, to go through it, to keep moving forward and surround yourself with people who are gonna support you, number one. And, and number two, challenge yourself. Because again, there's a physical dependency that most people don't understand. And a lot of the people I know, weren't addicted to heroin. They weren't, they started with pills, pills. They started with pills and then it moved on because the physical dependence of their body. These are people that not in a million years we you would think would be picking up heroin or smack in the street. These are people that got caught in a tough situation and they didn't have the right means or, or the right time to get out of it, if you will. But what I believe, and I believe this deep down in my heart, is that God is the one ultimately that, re that, that restores sanity to us but we have to believe in something greater than ourselves. We have to believe that if we got ourselves into this position, we could get ourselves out of it, but we need help. That's where we need community. That's where we need family, social media. We need people, realize this, out of all the addicts, where are they all? They're all on social media. As a matter of fact, most of them are very active on social media. Why? Because they're alone, they're isolated. 
So that's why you need, as someone, if you have a friend, a cousin, a brother, yourself, you need to get out, you need to move around, you need to restore the activity that takes place in the brain because the body's gonna have a physical dependence and that's where the real struggle is. But unconditional love is what ultimately opens up the heart and it allows time for the mind to clear itself. So my addiction was very difficult to come out of, um, you know, because it was had a lot of outside factors, but at the end of the day I believed and I, and I, I received, I opened up, because I was very easy to love somebody. Even through active addiction I could help somebody. But it was receiving that love that, and, and, and understanding that I was where I was, but that's not who I am, right? And that's the most important part is that you can change, you can overcome, you can grow. Just believe in yourself, number one, and do your best to find people who support you and stand by them. That's what helped me, you know, get to where I am now. Absolutely, and uh, Brock, uh, Brock um, Mike, before the show, I mentioned that there's a great resource and I wanna reach out to them and, and hopefully we can do a show from their facility and I want to give out this um, address and phone number. It's called Oasis, O-A-S-A-S, -A -S dot New York, dot gov. And it's the first program in the nation to rid workplace stigma surrounding addicts. And I think, let's talk about this facility that it's such a great resource for people suffering, and it's right here in New York, to rid that stigma dealing with addictions. And, Let's talk about how important this could be for someone suffering in the throes of addiction. Well, look, I mean, the stigma is, it's tough, right? You think an addict and you think that a lot of people give up on addicts because a lot of people are, you could say they're selfish or you could say that they just had enough. But again, these, these places open up the door for the body to heal, right? And sometimes even if they're in a rehab long enough, their mind can heal. But if they don't do the work in the heart, it just manifests itself. It will find a way to manifest itself. Whether it's body or mind, you will be drawn back. And from my experience, these places, they're amazing. I, I mean, and how we brought up Oasis, I'm gonna look into it more. Anyone out there that thinks that you could go to Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, there's so many places that you can go to get the tools that you need. And I gotta say, I've been to these rooms. Brock dragged me down to these places. Brock was in and out of these, these different rehabs. And, he always said to me, and this is really important, he always said to me, how come I can't beat it? Why, am I, am I doomed? Am I, am I just one of those people that are never gonna get it? And at the end of the day, the truth is, is that you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself, number one, and these places give you the tools that you need to overcome. But when you get back out there, the world is the world. You know what I mean? And I say this to people in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous is that when you go into those rooms, there's no ego. It's amazing. You can sit there all day. You can talk and, and you just know that these people are being real and that you're not alone. That's extremely important to feel that. But then you go out into the real world and the real world is not as easy as, you know, an egoless room, if you will, or a rehab. You know, they, they, they build you up. But it's after that where the work needs to be done. You need to believe in yourself and you need to surround yourself with people who have overcame this situation. You gotta believe in yourself. So these, all these organizations are great and I would like to get more involved and I'm going to get more involved with these organizations. Absolutely, I want to give the phone number for anyone struggling with addiction. The number is 1-877-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, New York. And, which is very important, you can also text to HOPE, New York. And you know, I was once listening, you know, on my way back from New Hampshire visiting my mom, I was listening to a show on addictions. Now let's talk about this. They said sometimes when people are in the throes of addiction and they're really at rock bottom, sometimes they're afraid to pick up the phone and speak to a counselor, but they will text. So that's important that we give out the number to text because sometimes it's easier for someone in the throes to text. 100% and that goes back to what I just said about social media and I, and I mean this anyone out there right now struggling with addiction my inbox is open I will pick up my phone and I will speak to you I don't care who you are or where you're from because if I can help one person I'm gonna do it that's the lesson that I learned but uh, you know going back to just in general when you're going through it and you're at that rock bottom and you feel like you're never gonna get out of it it's almost like you got weight you know weights on your, your foot in the, you know in the middle of a pool you just have to keep going, right? They say the only way to get out of hell is to go through it. 
Well, that's what this is. And this disease, as Harvey said, um, and I want to be really clear here, is that this is a disease. You wouldn't treat someone with cancer the way you treat a drug addict, would you? No. But at the end of the day, you have to, again, go back to the unconditional love. It is so important. And, and, and as Howie said, having the ability to text, huge difference. Being in front of someone, that's hard. Being on the phone with someone, especially when you're at that rock bottom, it's hard. But when you hit that bottom, you need to have you know, the means to, to reach out to these people, to have someone you can trust. And that's where I highly recommend going to places like this, going to the rooms, building a network. Because if you don't build a network, your disease is gonna take you over. It's gonna make you think things that are not true. It's gonna do whatever it has to do to, to satisfy what it wants. It wants you dead or suffering. So if you wanna beat this disease, you have to reach out, you have to believe in yourself. And if you can't talk, text, say something, anything. Because we're here to grab your hand. And it's so prevalent, you know, we all uh, met at uh, Billy's Beach Cafe before the show for some really good wings and really delicious uh, food. And uh, on our way out, we were talking to uh, one of the people who worked there, and she mentioned to me that six years ago today, she lost her best friend to a heroin, heroin overdose. So it's so prevalent in our society. Everyone that we know has been affected a friend, a relative, it's so prevalent. That's why, Michael, I think your segment is so important. And folks, if contact Michael O'Neill through Facebook. Um, you, when you hear him speak, he's so passionate. And I firmly believe that this segment is gonna save so many lives. And the goodwill you're doing is it's just, we've only tapped into it, it's only beginning. Michael, I'm so thrilled you're part of our show family because I, I think that you, you talk from the heart, you're so passionate, and it really will save a lot of lives. And if I can just end on one thing, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head about people, you know, at their lows not being able to reach out. And it's important to know that you have somewhere to go, right? It's very important that you, you know that, and that's why you have to build the network. And, you know, when I was in my low, you know, again, I there's a stigma. I didn't want to say it. I want to say I'm an addict. I didn't want to believe it. But at the end of the day, doing that liberated me because I realized that's not who I am. It's who it might have been who I was, but that's not who I am today, and that doesn't have to be who I am tomorrow. And you could say that same thing, and you could be sitting in this chair talking about your recovery, sharing your story to give people the hope and strength that they need to overcome this horrible disease that it is, and an epidemic is the right word to, to use. So thank you for giving me the time, Howard, to come out here and share it. And, and, and uh, just to end on that note, just unconditional love is ultimately what's going to be what cures th this disease. We, might, we thank you, Michael, and we look forward to hearing you from next week and the weeks after that because your message is so vitally important and uh, we're thrilled you're part of our family and um, again, this has only just begun. And folks, if you're in the throes of addiction, reach out and help. And Michael is a living proof that can turn your life around from someone in the throes of addiction to a person with a loving family, a great job, and a great outlook on life. He's living proof it can happen. Your life can be turned around for the better. Michael O'Neill, attention on attentions.